Hello and welcome to the PB Animation Recap. This is a, a video where I'm going to talk about and show off some aspects of PB production and rigging and models and stuff and all that just for fun. Uh, and also because uh, I think it'll be educational. Um, this is kind of spurred on because I've seen comments of people saying things like, oh, it's done with mocap or there's an app where you can do it or something like that. And I hate to say it, but the petty side of me sees those comments and goes, no, it was not. It was, in fact, click, all hand animated and rigged and stuff. If it was done with an app or mocap, um, I don't know. I don't know if it would look worse or better, but it would certainly look different. That's uh, for sure. So this is the PB rig, uh, that, or the main rig that I used for, uh, what's it called? Most of the series, you know, there's the different outfits, obviously, and those are separate rigs. Um, but this is the rig, and this is uh, basically the first thing I produced for the entire series. Um, it's rigged using this thing called Rigify and Blender. Oh, right now, it's a little glitch with the model. <laughs> Let me fix it. But while I fix it, Rigify is a uh, system in Blender that... Um, basically allows you to rig things really fast uh, and you get a bunch of pre-made control wow it's still not fixed okay just ignore it that's not fixed but it allows you to uh, rig things automatically and it gives you all these controls uh, like the shoulders here which automatically get handled you'll see here if I move this part the legs stay yeah, so it's the system that makes it a lot easier to rig than your normal just um, bone rigging. Well, it uses bone rigging, but it's like set up for you to be more efficient. I'm already rambling, and I'm so little into the video. Okay. <laughs> Basically, it gives you a really good rig that allows you to do some really nice body animation uh, in a short amount of time. It's really bothering me that the eyes don't work. Um, yeah. That's the rig. Uh, some weaknesses with the rig are, uh, I'll show off the wrist here. If you'll notice quite easily, the arm can clip into the clothing. And I tried my best to hide it in episodes or not just not show it off, but uh, it does get visible at times where you're like, oh, I can see the arm clipping through the shirt there. And it, look at that. If you see that, that's a bummer. Basically, it comes down to weight painting, which is not something I'm going to talk about. <laughs> I'm going to keep it not technical, hopefully. Well, a pleasing amount of technical. Um, yeah, so that's one of the weaknesses of the rig. There's one personal art qualm I have with it uh, where I think the shoulders are a little too boxy and, like, uh, you can kind of, like, fix it by, like, moving this thing, but it's something where it's, like, I didn't want to get too nitty-gritty with the rig. And it was the first thing I made, and I wasn't, like, dunking a huge amount of time into making this rig, but it ended up being the rig for the entire series, so, you know. Uh, other weaknesses, uh, let's see. Yeah, the foot can clip, and the fingers are very stiff. And they bend in strange ways. So if I take these two, for example, and bend them, oops, you can see that they like don't bend amazingly. I have to do it either manually or just hide it uh, to make it actually bend. You know, he does ball his fist a few times in the series, so it is possible to make it happen. It just looks weird. I try to avoid showing the hands as much as possible because the real uh, feature of the rig that everyone's paying attention to is essentially the upper body um let me light it better oh there's no lights in here let me put it back <laughs> so yeah the the real features that need to work are these three controls it is really bothering me if the eyes don't work i'm gonna fix that real quick hooray fixed it <laughs> okay so but the real star is these three controls here so the basic principle of animating uh, the entire series of PB was that um, 
whatever movement I do in the head, I try to offset from the shoulder and in turn from the waist. So usually the order of animation is if I'm moving the head, then the shoulders will follow a few frames after, and then the torso will follow a few frames after the shoulders. As a result, a um, really simple movement, instead of um, just all happening at the same time, has a stagger to it. It's kind of like drag and follow through if you know your animation principles. That's how I handle it. Um, and it's honestly such a simple trick. And this rig is really flexible because um, the, the shoulder controls are just so all-encompassing. Where it's like, I don't have to mess with anything in between. I literally, for the most part, in really minimal vids, control just these three uh, little devices here to make all of the animation work. And I'll show that off eventually. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the face. So the face is all animated by hand as well. And the setup for this is really awkward because this is out of Bigify's normal um, uh, bounds. There is face rigging in Bigify, but it's not amazing. And it's a little complicated, so I don't, I, I don't bother with it. The art style actually allows me to like completely skirt around. Uh, messing with any real face rigging because the time investment to get face rigging working in Rigify is just not worth it for me and I like this art style. There is one drawback with this art style and that's anything I produce with a character that looks like this people will probably link back to PB when generally that's just the art style of the character and not you know PB again. <laughs> So the face uh, has to be animated piece by piece, which is annoying, I guess. Yeah, it is annoying. Um, so basically the eyebrows, uh, I usually would grab both and move them up and down. Sometimes I'd bring one up, one down, you know, whatever the scene calls for, really. And I'd also animate these uh, with the head on a delay. So if the head goes back, the eyebrows are going to... Uh, start moving after the head starts moving and stop moving after the head stops moving and it creates like a nice dynamic feel the eyebrows actually really help make the whole character's face just in general feel more dynamic um the eyes are uh basically projected their meshes that are projected onto the uh, spheres of the eyes and as you've seen they can freak out and do some strange things. They can kind of get warped if I didn't keep up on the rotation. They're, this is the messiest part of the rig, outside of, you know, the other stuff. And then the mouth is completely controlled by these sliders here. So I can make PB smile, frown, uh, open his mouth, purse his lips. Uh... I can put their left side of the mouth down, put their right side down, uh, and I can like, you know, mix everything of course. And all of the lip syncing for the most part is handled by the open and purse feature. Um, uh, that's pretty much it. It's very, very minimal, but it allowed me to lip sync much faster. Lip syncing of course was still possibly the worst part of animating. It's just not fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, but all of it was handled with this. And, you know, the most important part of dialogue, a teacher told me, and I honestly believe, is more that the body motion is what sells um, the dialogue over the mouth. As long as the mouth, like, kind of gets the shapes right, the body motion can, like, carry it more. Um, because, honestly, I don't know. The body's more than the mouth, basically. I just have to get the mouth close enough. All right. So I've rambled about the rig for a while. And let's go to one of the sets. Hello. So All right. So this episode is, for some reason, the biggest one. And I feel like there's a lot of uh, interesting things to talk about here. So uh, first off, right off the bat, clipping. Okay. <laughs> it's annoying. But um, part of the reason that happens is because the hands are actually separate from the body. They're just kind of like stuck in like arm sockets here. Um, that's behind, beside the point. 
So you'll notice that the camera, in fact, is actually held by PB. Um, like the this is the camera that's used to render the scene. It is literally attached to PB's hand, and that's what kind of, uh, in my opinion, gives the series like an quote authenticity to it visually, where the character is actually literally holding their arm out like it's the camera. Um, and the arm, uh, actually, this hand control here, if I switch it to here, and go there, there, oh, what the hell, there it is. So, um, the hand actually, throughout the entire short, uh, dynamically just kind of, like, moves, um, and basically the purpose of that is, when he's holding the camera, uh, you'll notice that the there's like a slight shake, like the hand is alive and uh, actually holding the camera. And it's just this little modifier here that slightly tweaks values to make the hand in space jiggle, basically. Um, another interesting thing about the scene is... Uh, let me zoom out. So you can see all of PB's actions. Look at that leg. And you can just kind of see everything gliding. The feet go to the door before PB actually gets there. Basically, you don't have to animate what you don't see. So if PB is not looking at their feet the whole time, then, you know, you don't have to animate the feet. Um, if the arm's not in shot, don't have to animate the arm. If nothing's on screen, then I don't even have to animate the body. So, I would often, if you noticed, uh, PB, if he was about to talk a lot, would rotate the camera and look at something, or point away, or something like that. And, basically, I did that to save time. And, I don't see it as something that's, like, lazy, it's more about efficient production. Because I produce these episodes uh, for the first half every day, and for the second half every other day with sometimes a little bit longer breaks. Um, and it's because I was literally, you know, producing them as I went along. And these videos, depending on what I need to create for them, they range from, at shortest, 45 minutes. If everything is ju it's just a set and less than 20 seconds of dialogue, I can get that out pretty fast. If it's building new things, building anything, the episode production time instantly shoots up to, like, Six hours, it feels like. <laughs> and, you know, if there's 24 hours in a day, six hours or, you know, one-fourth of my day is going to making one of these things. Um, and I made these during school. So I was in college classes, and I had actual schoolwork to do. So I do these shortcuts because they're kind of necessary, and I don't think they super negatively impact the series. If PB needs an acting moment, then PB will have an acting moment. But if PB is just explaining stuff, and I have an, a reason to have PB look at something, you know, two birds with one stone. Um, let's see, anything else? Oh yeah, here's a funny story. So, the windows in this series were something that a lot of people uh, noticed and talked about. This episode, fortunately, does, in fact have PB have a reflection. You can kind of see it there. You can see the phone PB's holding. PB's not holding the phone super well, though. <laughs> uh, so the reason why this happens, uh, why some episodes have reflections and some don't, is because Eevee, this engine that I'm rendering in, um, has some quirks to it, and sometimes I just forgot. Um, Eevee is great. It allows me to make episodes super fast. I don't have to do a full quote render, um, because PB's rendering is just, oh, sorry, not PB, Eevee's rendering is just slimmer, faster, a little lower fidelity, but for this series, it looks fine. Um, but the way glass works is you have to basically add this reflection, this plane here. This is like a little gizmo that enables good reflection. So you can see here, if I place it here, you can see PB really clearly. And if I move it, suddenly it's all smeary and blurry and I just forgot. And sometimes maybe just I forgot to set the metallic setting up high enough on the window reflection, you know, on this on the material. 
uh there's a few reasons why it happens and every time it happens it's not deliberate it's usually a result of me not having enough time to do something uh me rushing to get an episode out something like that and i wish i could have fixed it i wish i could have seen it coming there's a lot of little animation errors that uh were pretty upsetting to have but you know on this uh time production schedule stuff um i don't know what can i do at the end of the day uh but it was a definitely a learning experience and uh uh interesting to behold so let's look at another scene all right so this is the uh extended set here of this just out not outdoor i don't know why. <laughs> indoor outdoor this uh large area that pb is in for most of the series um this set took me i think it was one of the longest builds i had uh outside of building the machine that eb overloads in one episode that took forever but this is one of the longest productions i had on a set um i like the set overall um renders in it take a while because of how many lights there are and uh in general i mean it's a little sparse but i think artistically it works for the series um, it would be cool if I could decorate it more, but, you know. Um, all the textures are provided from a website called CC0 Textures, and basically they just have these amazing textures that are... Look at that. This is specular mapping. It tells what part of the surface to be shiny or not, and it just makes a really nice and realistic, like, tile reflection. Just so nice. CC0 Textures was literally a lifesaver for this... Uh, this ARG and it allowed just for that extra visual snap I guess to just make the series look better you can clearly tell that like there's amazing materials here and then like brown door and then realistic metal and then no texture here it's um it's hard to find textures uh it used to be way harder but CC0 textures of course made it a lot easier so less cc0 textures anytime you see a surface that looks very real it is cc0 textures um so this episode uh let's see took about i don't know i want to say like eight hours total maybe to build the set this one specifically is just pb talking about and showing off the layout of the uh new area here um the animation for this episode Well, that's not very descriptive. Part doesn't work on it either. I, I guess I'll um I'll go to Extranet Hardware. Maybe maybe I can find something there. Maybe okay. <laughs> oh, actually, this is a good place to show off. Uh, the animation principle I was talking about. I have an outline I'm looking at, and this isn't on the outline, but whatever. We're going off the rails. So here you can see PB's head starts moving a little bit. The shoulders move, and then the body moves. It's like a staggered movement. Yeah, so this is the Infobiotech big room set. Um, these stairs are super unsafe. There's no handrail. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of plot hole. No, it's not a plot hole. That is a, a hashtag joke. Uh, you'll get nothing but hashtag jokes on this YouTube channel. Uh, here's a fun unseen thing. Look at that. There's two file cabinets under this massive desk and this laptop that I think only showed up from this perspective. Yeah, um, I'm glad I didn't waste more time modeling this stuff. This is also unseen, this little cup of pens. I don't think it pops up once in the series. Uh... Yeah, so let's check out one last set. All right, so this is one of my favorite, sorry, <laughs> one of my favorite sets I produced for this entire thing. Um, it's really small, and uh, I just like it. I don't know, it's something about this like little lobby here that I just find very aesthetically pleasing. I like these two metal squares hanging. I like this line on the walls. I kind of wish I added it elsewhere in the series, but this was this was produced late in the series, 
and this text is cool on the thing. I actually textured, since it's so small, this area, I can actually give things textures that look kind of nice. There's this nice floor with this little reflection here. Um, overall, I just really love the set. I just kind of want to show it off because you barely see any of it. Um, this episode was what you could, I guess, if you wanted to, consider a budget episode because it is all... I don't remember if this was part of an episode or if this was the whole episode. But uh, yeah, you don't see PB the whole video. Oh look, it's the binary, wow. Um, uh, but you know what? Building the set for this episode probably took me a while. I remember building it in class actually. Oops, sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't consider this a budget episode because this is a nice, this is a nice set, okay? <laughs> Uh, I just want to talk about, while I'm here, the overall production experience um, with this, and it was pretty hectic, and near the end it was just really stressful, because there were a lot of people watching it, which is unusual for pretty much anything I do, um, and there was like a lot of story stuff to deliver on, and... I don't know. It was it was getting kind of crazy near the end. Um, overall, I'm just like I'm glad I did it on. I did it on essentially what is a whim because I just was like, "Hey, I have TikTok. I used it. I wasn't like, I didn't see much super super interesting animated content on there. If there is interesting animated content, I didn't. It just never appeared on my page. <laughs> there probably is. I don't know. I'm saying there wasn't any, but um. I don't know, I just kind of made it on a whim, and it was a fun learning experience. Uh, stressful near the end, and I'm worried it'll be like my only thing, quote, I'm known for, of course. That's everyone's worry when they make a thing. Um, and, and I don't know. A little bit of tasteful silence for you to think there. Sorry about that tasteful silence. Um, so this is the, um, tiny home that, oh, it's Cindy. This is the tiny home at the end of the series. Uh, this set in this area, um, took forever. It took a really, really long time to build, and it's not that much. It's essentially just, like, a kitchen, some wood texture, uh, but the real pain was the outdoors and the outdoors was just there's a reason the entire story took place in a lab for the most part and that reason is rendering anything outdoors is just so hard <laughs> like it's hard um there's no plants because i couldn't find any good plant textures in the really really short amount of uh the short time i had to make this i think i gave myself a week but i was really burnt out by the end of the series so um it was it was hard to, uh, you know, spend so much time on this because I was just burnt. <laughs> um, but this outdoors area, um, I mean, it's supposed to be a desert. A lot of people were like, oh, you're on a different planet, or it's a simulation, or you're still in the lab. And uh, I understand when people say that. Um, but at the same time, it's like, oh, please suspend your disbelief just a little more. Please, I beg you. But I understand why people did it. Um, you know, I don't think people expected the series to end as soon as it did. Um, actually, one last little tidbit I want to talk about is lying. You should lie about your lighting. This is what the scene would look like if I didn't lie and put a lamp right next to PB's face. You should lie about your lighting because the honest truth is kind of ugly and not shaded right or not shaded or not lit it just doesn't look right you know there are some episodes uh really early in the series like i'd say the episode where pb walks in and finds his clone that episode is the worst lit episode by far it is just unbelievable how bad the episode looks to me um the person yeah um because his lips just like the shading on them just freaked out i don't know what happened there go the mouth <laughs> it's just unbelievable how bad the shading is in that episode 
uh, after that, that's where I started to be like, okay, I have to lie. I have to start lying about the shading because lying is better than the truth. Look at that. There's also depth of field in this episode, kind of blurry back there. Um, yeah, I don't know. This whole series was um, produced entirely by me uh, outside of friends helping with voices and uh, I had a friend consulting with me on story stuff. Um, but the actual production of the episodes was all done by me and it was certainly a large task. It was, it was, um, it was a lot of work, <laughs> but yeah, sorry to do another one of these extended epilogue, uh, <laughs> outros, but I just want to talk about this now because I don't think I'm going to make like a sequel to this or anything. And I just want to shortly talk about um, my approach and ethos to making PB here. Because, um, uh, I don't know, it might be interesting. So, a lot of ARGs um, typically rely on video distortion. And when I start talking about ARGs, I am not an ARG wizard. <laughs> I do not know too much, but this is just from personal experience what I have seen. A lot of ARGs that I've seen rely on a lot of video distortion and like effects and um, extra little editing bits to give across puzzles, to give across story, stuff like that. And the trick with PB is I wanted to keep it as in-universe, in-phone as possible. So all the puzzles had to be puzzles that PB, realistically in his world, could see. All of that uh, had to be delivered that way. The website is another thing, another form of contact I used um, later to talk to people in the audience. But um, yeah, I try to keep it as in the phone as possible. So uh, no distortion of the phone, nothing like that. I tried to keep in mind, would PB have time to upload this episode after what happened? Um, the time scale isn't completely accurate, of course, between episodes and stuff like that. But I try to keep that in mind as much as possible. Because um, I think that's... it's. I want it to be internally consistent. Um, I think that's that was kind of the quest. There's a few moments I broke that. Arguably the music video episode um, broke that. PB whipping out a music video. Um, but other than that, you know. Uh, my secondary approach to it, outside of just from, like, keeping internally consistent, is uh, from a story point. I tried to keep it in a pretty basic uh, three-act structure. Um, that's how I saw it, at least. Um, where first act is in the room, second act is in the hallway, end of second act would be, like, uh, when PB gets... Uh, I don't know, it's probably like a rising tension thing. I don't it doesn't matter exactly how you map the story, but the basic phases are EB's in the room, EB EB is the second, and then the last arc is EB uh sorry, the new PB leaving. And things like the music video episode, while they may not be internally consistent, are used as like a story moment to have one final connection with PB before the next episode, which, you know, is very calculated from a story perspective. Kinda mean but gotta break eggs to make a cake. Uh, sorry about that, people. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the ethos. Keep it consistent. Uh, don't do like extra effects and stuff like that, which actually kind of got in the way of adding puzzle elements to it because um, later in the series, I like, you know, IBT did some meddling in the story and like visually as well, but you know, I, uh, it was it was an interesting hurdle to try to do everything from PB's camera. Uh, and that's, I guess, basically the core of what makes this arc tick. It's PB, camera, viewer, and hopefully not that much in between that. And that is what ideally makes the connection feel there as well as the Twitter outreach and the uh, YouTube. Actually, one last tangent before I end the video. How, I think one of the major faults with the ARG is how spread out it is. Because PB was interacting with people on TikTok, was interacting with people on Twitter, was interacting with people on YouTube. And there was a lot of things I set up in comments 
that are just spread across all three platforms. And it's not easy to aggregate all of the stuff PB said. Like the music episode was foreshadowed by PB in the YouTube comments and maybe like a little bit on Twitter. But there's just uh, a few cases of things where I foreshadow things in comment sections, but um, it, they're so spread out that it's, it's hard for people to keep on top of all the comments that PB leaves. Yeah. So I guess this is um this is the end of the video. This this is the last Lord of the Rings. Bilbo wakes up and laughs with everyone for like ten minutes, and then time skip. Okay, <laughs> this is this is it. Uh, thank you for watching this. If you made it all the way, uh, if you made it all the way, congrats! Wow, you 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 a genius. But um yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed PB. And that's it. Yeah.